Hello, today we will examine another chilling case together. Each murderer has their own method of ending their victim's life some strangle, others use a knife, and a few employ obscure techniques that baffle investigators by leaving no trace of the cause of death in the post-mortem report. In today's case, the killer opted for an unconventional approach to eliminate their prey. The narrative unfolds in Bathinda, a city in the Indian state of Punjab, where Chupindapal Kaur, also known as Sunyu, resided while Navnainder Singh lived approximately 96 miles away in the city of Peshala. Prior to proceeding, I want to mention that Bafinda stands as one of the oldest cities in Punjab, whereas Pashiala is renowned as the royal and picturesque city of Punjab. Navnainder, a professional mathematics teacher, became engaged to Sonu in early 2020. Although they had initially planned to hold their wedding shortly after the engagement, the rising number of Covid cases in India resulted in a nationwide lockdown in February. Despite Sanyu's family's eagerness to have the wedding promptly, Navnainder continuously delayed the date. After a significant amount of time had passed, he ultimately agreed to wed Sanyu in October, setting the date for October 20th, 2021. Both families expressed their joy over this decision and commenced preparations for the wedding. In preparation for the event, 28-year-old Sanyu travelled to Pashiala, where Navnainder resided, to shop for the wedding. She had obtained permission from her family in advance and desired to spend some time with Navnainder before the wedding. Navnainder and Sunny began communicating by phone only after their engagement as their marriage had been arranged and they were previously strangers. On October 11th, 2021, she visited Navnainder's home to stay for a few days and together they shopped for their wedding. Sonu intended to stay with Navnainder for approximately a week, during which she conversed with her family over the phone on October 11th, 12 and 13. However, on the night of October 13th, when her family attempted to call her, Sonu did not pick up. Up to that point, everything appeared normal to Sonu's family, who assumed she was occupied and would return the call later, but that did not occur. On October 13th, Sonu did not contact her family. The next day, October 14th, Sonu's family tried reaching out to her early in the morning, but she did not answer. This behaviour was unusual for Sonu, causing her family to become very concerned. They contacted Navnainder, who revealed that Sonu had left his house after an argument the previous night. Initially, Navnainder expected Sonu to return once she had cooled off, but as time passed without her coming back, he began searching for her. Sonu's family was understandably worried upon hearing that their daughter had been missing since the previous night. In response, they travelled 96 miles from Bathinda to Pashiala to search for her. Despite their efforts, they were unable to locate her and eventually decided to report her disappearance to the Pashiala police, providing them with a detailed account of the situation. The police filed their report and summoned Navnainder to the police station for questioning. Despite Navnainder recounting the same story to the police that they had a disagreement on the evening of the 13th, she stormed out of the house in frustration and inadvertently left her phone behind the authorities found two peculiar aspects. Firstly, Navnainder and Sonny were engaged and set to marry in a mere seven days, yet Sonny departed angrily from their shared residence. The police reasoned that minor disagreements are common in relationships, prompting them to question the severity of the altercation that led Sonny to leave. Secondly, the police noted that over 24 hours had elapsed since Sonu's disappearance without Navnainder reporting it to the authorities as a missing person. This marked the initial instance where the police began to harbour suspicions towards Navnainder. The police only had suspicions and lacked concrete evidence against him. In conversations with Navnainder and Sonu's families, the police found out that the couple had been happy since their engagement. However, considering Navnainder's behaviour and other observations, the police suspected his involvement in Sanyu's disappearance. Subsequently, an investigation into Navnainder's background revealed shocking revelations. It was uncovered that Navnainder had a previous marriage to Sukhdeep Kaur, who had passed away from a heart attack on September 19th of the preceding month. Upon learning the information, the police suspected that Sanyu's family might have been aware of the situation leading them to consent to Sonu's marriage with Navnainder. However, when questioned about Navnainder's previous marriage, which resulted in his wife's recent passing, Sonu's family was stunned. They were unaware of this fact, as Navnainder had never disclosed it to them. The police's suspicions heightened, 
questioning the timing of Navnindar's remarriage shortly after his wife's death. Additionally, Navnindar's failure to disclose his past marriage to Sanyu's family further fueled their doubts. Consequently, the police arrested Navnindar and secured a six-day custody order from the court. Initially, the police's interrogation was routine, but Navnindar began to display signs of vulnerability over time. When questioned more intensely by the police, Navnindar confessed that Sonu hadn't gone missing, but that he had killed her. He then instructed the police to bring a labourer along and accompany him to his residence in the urban area of Pashiala. A team of police officers escorted Navnindar to his home with heightened security. Upon entering the house, Navnindar's elderly parents were present and were visibly shocked by his condition. Following this, Navnindar led the police to his room and requested them to move the table and sofa. Upon removing a carpet, a freshly dug hole was revealed in the floor. The police then had a labourer they brought with them dig at that spot. After digging a little deeper, they discovered Sanyu's body. Navnindar then confessed to the police that he had murdered Sanyu on the evening of October 13th. It was revealed that Navnindar became suspicious that Sanyu, whom he was romantically involved with, was already married due to certain habits he exhibited. This suspicion led to a heated argument between them on October 12th, prompting Navnindar to plan Sanyu's murder. The next day, Navnindar deceitfully convinced Sanyu that inhaling oxygen from a specialized oxygen bag would enhance her beauty for their upcoming wedding. Trusting Navnindar, Sanyu agreed to use the oxygen bag. Subsequently, Navnindar procured an oxygen bag from the market. He encountered masks with holes in the bag, but he required one that would effectively block outside air and prevent inside air from escaping. Despite his efforts, he eventually locates the suitable mask. Afterwards, he empties the oxygen bag and refills it with nitrogen gas. Returning home, he instructs Sanyu to wear the mask continuously until further notice. Sanyu obediently follows Navnindar's instructions, unaware that the gas she is breathing is nitrogen, not oxygen. Shortly after, Sanyu's health rapidly declines and she loses control of her faculties. Sanyu loses consciousness and shortly after, she passes away. Following her death, Navnindar increases the volume of his room's television to its maximum level, ensuring that any noise he makes while digging a hole will go unnoticed by his parents. He proceeds to dig a hole within the confines of his room, ensuring it is deep enough to accommodate Sanyu's body comfortably. Once finished, he carefully levels the soil, places a carpet over the spot, and restores everything else to its original position. Despite Navnindar's parents being inside the house, they remain completely unaware of the events that transpired. After hearing the narrative, the police were astonished by Sukhdeep's unconventional death, leading to suspicions. They decided to investigate and spoke with her family, who mentioned no signs of injury on Sukhdeep's body. Despite Navnindar claiming Sukhdeep died of a heart attack, the police believed him and skipped a post-mortem. However, after interrogating Navnindar again, he confessed to falling in love with Sonu despite being married to Sukhdeep. In the meantime, Sanyu's family became aware of Navnindar's existence and started considering the idea of arranging a marriage between them. However, Navnindar chose not to disclose to Sanyu's family that he was already married. Consequently, in order to marry Sanyu, it became imperative for him to eliminate Sukhdeep. Furthermore, Sukhdeep was in her seventh month of pregnancy, which meant that Navnindar's responsibilities were soon to multiply. Subsequently, he decided to administer nitrogen gas to soup deep core for the first time. He had actually convinced his wife that inhaling additional oxygen would be beneficial for her well-being and for the health of their unborn child. Like Sunyu, soup deep core trusted Navnindar with providing additional oxygen. However, Navnindar filled an oxygen bag with nitrogen gas as he couldn't find a sealed mask. Sukhdeep unknowingly inhaled the gas and tragically passed away. Navnindar then pretended Sukhdeep was unresponsive, leading to her family finding her lifeless body with no signs of injury. In the meantime, Navnindar propagated the rumour that Sukhdeep might have suffered a heart attack, leading Sukhdeep's entire family to believe this falsehood. Consequently, Navnindar committed his initial act of homicide by utilising nitrogen gas to end the lives of both his wife and his fiancée. 
Following this shocking revelation, Sukhdeep Kaur's family was left utterly astounded and profoundly grief-stricken as they had entrusted their daughter's life to an individual they perceived as educated and sensible. Nonetheless, as the investigation progressed, the police stumbled upon yet another startling revelation. In addition to being married to Sukhdeep and intending to marry Sunyu, Navnainder was already wedded to another woman, whom he concealed in a rented residence situated in a distinct vicinity from his actual abode. This implies that Navnainder initially wedded Sukhdeep Kaur, subsequently married another woman, and was presently contemplating a third marriage with Sunyu. However, Navnainder was aware that proceeding with the marriage would likely lead to his eventual capture. In order to clear the path for his new union, he made the decision to take the life of his innocent former wife. If Navnainder had disclosed to Sonyu that he was already married and had a child, and she still agreed to marry him, he could have proceeded with the marriage. Navnainder believed that he could eliminate Sonyu just as he had done with Sukhdeep, without anyone discovering the truth. Unfortunately for him, his plan backfired and his involvement in both murders was eventually exposed. As for the subsequent events in the case, there is currently no additional information available on the internet. Journalism and true crime intersect in a delicate balance of responsibility and ethics. The moral lesson in this context lies in the power of storytelling and the impact it has on society. Journalism should strive to seek the truth and present it in a fair and balanced manner, especially when covering true crime stories. The lesson here is to approach these stories with empathy, respect for the victims, and a commitment to uncovering the facts without sensationalizing or exploiting the pain of those involved. It's a reminder that the pursuit of truth should always be coupled with a deep sense of responsibility towards the subjects and the audience, and that the stories we tell can have a profound impact on the lives of others.